We want to bring in now Hal Kempfer, a retired Marine Corps intelligence officer and the CEO of Global Risk Intelligence and Planning. Hal, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, Natasha. So, Hal, President Biden calling this a difficult decision to send cluster munitions. First of all, is this the same thing as carpet bombs? Why are they so controversial? Can you help us understand what are the negatives that come from using this? Well, carpet bombing is a term that actually comes out of World War II. That's uh, when we drop massive loads of bombs from bombers and basically like a carpet, it would just wipe out an entire area. Cluster bombs are a little bit different. Uh, there are some similarities. It's a bunch of small submunitions within a larger canister. It can be fired from artillery, which is kind of what we're talking about with going to Ukraine, or from rockets, which is another thing they're talking about going to Ukraine, or from an aircraft. Now, these submunitions will scatter across a huge area, and they're kind of smart munitions. If they hit a soft target, like a bunker roof, or if they hit an open area, they will explode in such a way to cause maximum effect uh, uh, across the board that way. If they hit a hard target, like a vehicle or armor or something, they actually are a shape charge, and they'll put the force of the charge going through the armor. So they're very effective. Of course, in years past, like Vietnam, uh, they had a high dud rate. The Russians have a high dud rate, about 30 to 40 percent. The dud rate now is about 2.5 percent. But there is a treaty signed in Dublin uh, in 2008, uh, imposed in 2010. Over 100 nations around the world have signed this treaty saying that we should not use it. And so it's got a lot of ethics uh, with it because of its history. In your mind, is it unethical to use this in the conflict in Ukraine right now? It's like any other weapon. It's legal, but you got to use it right. If you use it in civilian areas, uh, well, that would be un unethical, and I think it would be a violation of the law of war. What they're looking at is using it against those Russian lines. So looking at those defensive zones, those bunkers, those mobile pillboxes, those old tanks they've set up. In, in using it in the correct way in those select areas, and keep in mind, this is Ukraine using it in the territory of Ukraine, uh, it's the appropriate weapon, and it could be a very decisive factor in, in being able to breach those lines so they can get in there and retake those the Zaporizhia Oblast, the rest of Kyrgyzstan Oblast, and the rest of those areas. Let's talk about this 500th day of, of the war in Ukraine. So we know that the casualties from Ukraine's counteroffensive are growing, that it is going perhaps more slowly than expected. Is it too soon to say that the strategy is not working? Well, everybody's looking at it. Of course, we want to put it in sports analogy. Gee, are they winning or are they losing? They're moving forward. They're making progress. They are moving against the, the toughest defensive positions uh, in the world. The Russian troops aren't great, but their positions are very well reinforced. In fact, many have said they're surprised with how much work the Russians actually put into their earthen works and putting concrete and other things in there to defend those areas. With that said, the Institute for the Study of War recently put out a report, I think it was yesterday, that says they're seeing signs that the southern defense, that Zaporizhia area, is looking what they call brittle. In other words, the pressure is getting too much, and there's a good chance that when it breaks, and this is what we've all anticipated, that when they do that breakout, when they go through, that they're going to fall fairly quickly, and that the it'll be like Kirshan, uh, or I mean, it would be like uh, Kharkiv was last summer, where they suddenly move very quickly across a very large area of terrain. Yeah, with the time we have left, um, President Biden is traveling to Europe uh, for the NATO summit this week. Ukraine has asked for membership in NATO. We know that idea was recently endorsed by Turkey's president. Would it help mm -hmm. Ukraine enormously in this war? And what is the likelihood that that membership will happen? I, I think the intent at this point would, would be great signal. It'd be a signal to Russia rather than uh, rather than causing a problem with it uh, ramping up the war, I think it would be a good signal at this time to say this is the intent of NATO. It also is the intent of the Europeans and the United States both that we're going to keep supporting Ukraine throughout this entire war effort. So it'd probably be a good move. The fact that that uh, President Erdogan of Turkey, who has been the one holding back on Sweden being fully uh, assessed into NATO, the fact that he came in so early and said he's in favor of it, I think that's a very good sign. And, and certainly it's uh, it's wind in the cells of Ukraine on the international front. Okay, always appreciate the insight and time. Hal Kempfer, thank you so much. Thank you, Natasha. Uh
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.